being able to play Windows games under Linux is absolutely awesome, but setting up the gaming environment can be a little bit tedious, especially if it's your first time actually doing so. While setting up the required packages, you know, Steam and Wine are fairly easy, if you want to go set up, say, Proton GE, this is way, way harder and requires you unraveling all the Wine dependencies, and if you're new to gaming under Linux, you may not know about some really useful programs like, say, Proton Up, Game Mode, or Mango HUD, which really will improve your experience. While there is certainly some learning value to be had, setting up all the gaming packages manually your first time, once you've done it at least once, you've learned everything you're going to learn, and I would much rather just automate the process. So today we are looking at a script known as Libre Gaming, which does exactly that. Now, it's not going to work on every single distro right now, it is still very much a work in progress, but in its current state, it's going to run on Ubuntu, Arch Linux and Fedora, and obviously distros based on those bases. Currently what it's going to install is the native version of Steam, not the Flatpak version. I don't hate the Flatpak version, but I do like the native version is the default option. Having the Flatpak as an option in the future, I think would be really useful though. It's also going to install Wine, along with unraveling all of the Wine dependencies. Basically, rather than just installing the Wine package, installing every dependency that Wine needs alongside Wine. We also get Game Mode, which is a program for enabling various system optimizations, which makes sense while you're trying to play a game. We get the Lutris Game Launcher, we get Mango HUD and G Overlay, which is a program for basically configuring Mango HUD, and we get Proton GE. It doesn't mention it here, but it also comes with Proton Up as well. Proton Up is a program for basically managing the versions you have of Proton GE and allow you to download newer versions without having to go to the GitHub. Other things like, say, the Heroic Launcher will probably be added in future versions of the install script. Now, actually running the script is fairly straightforward. I do have one minor problem with it, and that is the default way it's installed it names it with capitals. It's not a big deal. It works the exact same way. It's just that the general way that CLI software is named is in lowercase. So there's really only three things we can do. We can install everything, so all the gaming packages and Proton GE with the dash A option. We can just install or update Proton GE with the dash P option, and we can install just the gaming packages and not Proton GE with the dash G option. So in my case, I'm going to install everything by doing the dash A option, include my password because we are gonna have to use our package manager to actually install these. In my case, I've got everything already installed, so it's gonna skip all of those. It's gonna try to install G overlay, which I already have installed as well. It's gonna try to update Proton GE, and I already have the latest version. So in my case, nothing's actually gonna be done. Now, once this is done, you're pretty much going to be good to go and most of the packages you need to start gaming under Linux will be installed. But the reason why I say most is because there's one part where it is actually missing something, which actually is important for Proton GE. It should probably be listed as a prerequisite if it is outside of the scope of the application, but for Proton GE to work, you need Vulkan enabled drivers but this doesn't actually install the Radeon Vulkan drivers that I would need for my system. I know that I need them, that's fine, but someone who's just running this script may not know that. Another thing is while it does have this section here about setting it up on Fedora, doing things like enabling non-free packages, it's actually missing the Arch prerequisite, which is that there's a bunch of things in here that are lib32. And on Arch, everything that is lib32 is inside of multi-lib, and multi-lib, at least on base Arch Linux, is not enabled by default. Now, installing this is pretty mindless. It doesn't really have any dependencies, so it has Git and Python 3, which you probably already have installed unless you're Ubuntu, which apparently doesn't have Git by default. Uh, and then all you need to do is run pip install Libre Gaming, or you can go and download the repo and then run the install script. That's literally all you need to do to get it installed. Now, there are a couple of, 
I guess, minor gripes I have. These aren't major issues, but I feel like would really, really improve the way this script actually works. Right now, there's basically no control in what's actually being installed. Obviously, if you want absolute control, go and install it manually. That makes a lot of sense. But what I mean by this is I would like some way to have, I guess, a minimal set of the packages being installed. So on my system, I don't use Mango HUD. I don't use Lutris. All the games I play are under Steam. So I need Steam, Wine, and Proton GE. If we had an option to do a minimal subset or maybe decide I want Steam and I want Lutris, but I don't want the Heroic Launcher, for example, I think that would actually be really, really useful. It's not a major problem, but I don't want to be installing a bunch of extra programs that I'm literally never going to be using. Now, the next one is only a problem in the weird edge cases where you're not using sudo. So if you're using, say, su or do as like I am, it's making hard-coded calls to sudo. Now, in my case, I do have sudo linked to do as, so it will still work, but if you don't, then it's just not going to run whatsoever. Even if you don't include do as support, at least include a fallback to su, just on those weird edge cases where sudo isn't installed. Maybe have the same things you have with, say, your package managers up here and have a list of options that it could be. A better choice, though, is probably to include an option to set what you want the sudo binary to actually be. And the exact same applies with your package manager as well. So if you have yay or Perot installed, it is going to use those instead of Pac-Man, but let's say you're instead using Yowit because you just haven't moved on from a couple of years ago. Or maybe you're using some new AUR manager that has just come out. In which case, it won't actually use them and it won't try to install the stuff that belongs inside of the AUR. Once again, having an option to configure what package manager to actually use, I think would be really useful. Now with that install or update Proton GE, all it's doing in the background is just running Proton Up. And there's nothing wrong with that. Proton Up is a great program and there's no point reinventing the wheel for absolutely no reason. Proton Up also does some other things though, like letting you download a specific version of Proton. That, I think, is a really cool feature, and I would like to see that added as basically a pass-through inside of this script. And I think there's a couple of other ProtonUp options that might be worth looking at. Obviously, don't include all of them. Some of them don't really make any sense in this context, but if you've already included install or update Proton GE, some of those might actually be useful. Now, Arch does have one other little problem. It's not a major problem, but under some circumstances might cause something to break. And that's the way that this command is actually working. The command itself is fine for installing stuff, but it's not doing a system update before doing the install. The problem with this is if there is a kernel update waiting, what's gonna happen is Wine has probably also been updated. And that means that the new version of Wine is going to be built against the latest version of the kernel. And Wine typically breaks if the kernel version does not match up exactly. That could easily be fixed by just including a pacman-syu before you are running this, or if you're using Peru like up here, then using Peru-syu or yay-syu instead. I would like to thank the developer of this script for contacting me over on Twitter. I probably would not have heard about this if you hadn't done so. And just to prove how early in development this script actually is, if you didn't go and look at the GitHub, there's actually a, uh, a debug statement right here. It's not a big deal, but someone should probably go and remove that one. I honestly do think this is a really useful script and things like this make it much easier to start gaming on Linux. It can be a little bit overwhelming when you first see what you need to do. While you can certainly work it out and the documentation for this is amazing and there are so many great videos on setting up your gaming environment under Linux, having this set up in one simple command I think is really cool. I hope to see the minor issues get fixed and more distros being supported in the future. Apparently one of those distros that is going to be worked on soon will be Gentoo. So if you want a single command way to do this on Gentoo, hey, that's really cool. Seeing as though this is just a Python script, honestly, I might actually just 
help out with the development of this myself. I do have a couple of things that I do want to see change pretty much straight away. So, I don't know, maybe I'll go and do it myself. So I think that's going to be it for me. And if you like this video and you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, I've got a Patreon, Subscriberstar, and LiberaPay linked in the description down below. I've actually added in a new section for the absolute insane people who've sent ridiculous tips. I reckon anything over... I reckon anything over $100, I'm going to include in that section. Not saying you have to send that. Not at all. But if you do, your name will probably be up there. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays where I live stream twice a week, upload about five or so YouTube shorts, and I've got a podcast called Tech Over T where I just rant about random stuff that's happening. I will probably be talking about this microphone this week because my short SM7B finally showed up. And this channel is also available over on Odyssey. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.